Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to try this setup. I was trying to do some work, trying to set it up outside, but it's really hot in the sun and it was just too shaded in the shady areas that I normally like to do it this early in the morning. But this is going to be a long study, so I wanted to get it started. Um, so I was going to try this setup and it's indoors still. But uh, what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be doing not a hardcore, but somewhat of an expository study on 1 John chapter 4. So if you want to turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, <laughs> in your King James Bible, now you can't see the full banner, but you know it's God's perfect written word for English-speaking people. This is my final authority. This, if you're truly saved and born again, a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman, this is your final authority, and we can hold each other accountable to it. Okay? So make sure you have this open. But before we get into the study, I want to explain what brought on the study. Okay? If I can, uh, I was watching the Godhead versus the Trinity studies at King James Video Ministries and um, came across one of the videos that he talks about. He shows a seven or eight year old video where he's teaching God the Father is the soul, which is what the Bible teaches. Uh, Jesus is the body, which is what the Bible teaches. And the, the Spirit of God, capital S Spirit, the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ is the body, and the capital S Spirit, okay, the Spirit of God, is the Holy Spirit. He taught that, but he used these terms that don't, aren't found in Scripture, and it started weighing heavy on his heart, and, he, and God put, uh, convicted him of it and said, listen, if it's not in Scripture, you shouldn't be using it. Now, he still struggles with that, with other words and stuff like that, but if it's not in Scripture, you shouldn't be using it. But in that video, he shows all these people, and I was, I've been following King James Ministries for six to seven years, so when he came out with that video, I might have just been newly saved, or just right before I got, God saved me. Um, but you go, he goes to the video, and you see people like Greg Miller saying, Amen, brother, you got ex-Catholics for Christ, Amen, brother, and you've got uh, Edward P.F., co-figure, Amen, brother. You know, he's saying amen to the plan of salvation that, that Brian's always preached, that I preach, that the Bible teaches. He was saying amen to it seven years ago. Amen, brother. Now he's a complete her heretic. He was a heretic to begin with, but he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But now he's totally against it. But he was saying amen. Amen, brother. And you have all these people. Amen, brother. Even people in the comment section that he didn't point out as he was going down, I could see some, and I remembered some of the names through talking with people in the comment section all those years ago, and you have all these people, amen, brother? So when we, when we do away with these false terms, what happens? Why are these people falling away and turning on us just like that? Well, I believe it's the Antichrist spirit. I've always preached this, brothers and sisters of Christ. You have the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible of Scripture, and you've got the Jesus Christ of the world. They're not the same Jesus. All these Bible versions pervert the uh, Jesus Christ that's actually the Antichrist. This Antichrist spirit, okay? There was a video, of, I didn't watch it, but I read the title. The title said, Philip Newton is, uh, what was it? Um, changing the terms or the rules of the Antichrist challenge. And I wasn't changing the rules, but these are the enemies. They'll say whatever they want to say. Ignore him, brothers and sisters Christ. Stick with the book. Stick with the Bible, the King James Bible. But I came out with the video way back when um, that was talking about how confession, we'll talk about it again in this study, talking about how confession comes from the heart and it's backed by the life that you live. That's why the Bible says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. True confession comes from the heart. And it's backed by the life that you're living. Okay. That was the point I was making. People can say something from up here and be lying to you and deceiving you. Okay. Over time, their life will not line up with their words. You'll notice that. Their words and their deeds don't line up. They're contrary one to another. And when you back them in a corner, their words will turn around and start lining up with their deeds. And you find out that they were lying to you. They were deceiving you. That was the whole point of that study. So just somebody saying Jesus Christ is coming to flesh doesn't mean that they don't have the Antichrist spirit. 
Bible says, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, word and deed need to line up for it to be a conf true confession of the heart. That was the whole point. And of course, the Antichrist spirit people out there fought me on it. Brethren read that and went, that makes sense. That's why these people that are obviously, this guy teaches you can lose your salvation today, but he says Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That's a contradiction. No, it isn't. He can say things to lie and deceive you. I'm one of you. That's the biggest deception ever. These false Christians that come to you and say, especially they're wolves in sheep's clothing, they come to you and say, I'm one of you. I'm a Christian too. The Bible tells us we're supposed to judge them and make sure that they are Christians and they're not fakes and they're frauds. And we get attacked on that too. But... Sometimes you have to, let's get to the notes, sometimes you have to go through some things to really grasp what God is showing you in Scripture. I'm starting to see more and more of people I thought were saved, and I believe, as we're getting through this study, I believe some of them are saved. But what are they doing? They're taking their eyes off the Jesus Christ of Scripture. I'm trying to make sure I point the right direction. They're taking their eyes off the Jesus Christ of Scripture, and they're putting their eyes on this Antichrist of the world, this Antichrist spirit. And they're getting all kinds of messed up. And they're falling away. But we're also, two things are happening. Brethren are falling away. It's like we're dropping like flies. And if you ever know that saying, the dropping like flies, flies only live 24 hours and then they drop. So you have like 100 flies, but when you start hitting that 24 hour mark, they start dropping like flies. That's what that whole saying, dropping like flies. It's like, it feels like we're dropping like flies, brothers and sisters in Christ. You're not keeping your eyes on the Jesus Christ of Scripture. You're not keeping your head and your heart in this book, living it. You're getting distracted by the world, and you're getting to start looking at the false Jesus of the world. The Antichrist spirit. Okay, The Antichrist spirit is there for two reasons, and I've always preached this. To prevent people from getting saved, and to mess people up that are saved. To prevent you from getting rewards. To make it where God has to chastise you. Satan just gets a thrill when God has to punish his own children. Those are the two reasons. Okay? He can't prevent people from getting saved, but he can really sure motivate people not to get saved by offering them the world. Okay? What's going on? People are dropping like flies. Brethren are dropping like flies. That's one thing. The other thing is, is I believe God is showing, the, he's separating the goats from the sheep. He's showing us plain as day people who are false and fake. You hit them up and say, hey, capital T Trinity is not a title for God. You claim to be a Bible believer, and you're doing this with love. Let's say, uh, ex-Catholics for Christ. Capital T Trinity is not a title for God. It's not in Scripture. You tell me you love the Word of God, that you, you're a Bible believer, I'm just showing you. The capital T Trinity isn't a title for God. And guess what I get called by ex-Catholic Christ? I'm a heretic. Anybody who goes against the Trinity is a heretic. Capital T Trinity that's not in Scripture as a title for God. I'm a heretic. What's going on here? We're going to find that out in the study. Okay, I'm at That one video I did about, hey, confession comes from the heart, that was the whole point. People can lie to you. Brian was on to something when he was talking about the Antichrist challenge. The true Antichrist challenge isn't just saying Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's confessing it, and when you confess it, it comes from the heart because it's a belief. And if it's a belief, it's going to be baked based by the action, your actions, the life that you live. Okay, I am redefining the challenge. What's the challenge? Do they believe Jesus Christ is God fully and completely? He's the person singular of the Godhead. He's God fully and completely. You might not understand the Godhead completely when you first get saved, but one thing you do know at salvation is that God manifests in the flesh, Jesus Christ, who is God fully and completely, died on the cross to pay for your sins. And mine. I understood that when I got saved. I didn't understand the whole thing about God the Father and the Son of God and the Spirit of God. You know, these three are one, the body, soul, and spirit thing. I didn't understand that fully when I first got saved, but I believe that Jesus Christ is fully gone. And when God showed me, the Holy Spirit comes in and shows me about the body, soul, and spirit, the only one person of the Godhead, I believe it, because it's in Scripture.
That's the God I believe in. Jesus Christ, fully and completely God. Okay? The true Antichrist challenge is, when you just sum it down, do you believe Jesus is God fully and completely? Do you believe he's God the Father? No, I don't. Then you're not saved. You have an Antichrist spirit. We're going to get into that in this study. If you try to separate Jesus from God the Father, other than body and soul, and you try to separate him and make him two distinct persons, you're worshiping two separate gods. You're wor worshiping an antichrist. Mm -hmm. See, the biggest deceptions you're going to see, brothers and sisters in Christ, in all the studies that Brother Brian's been putting out, the studies that I've been putting out, the studies that Brother JT at Sinners to Repentance, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, and some of the other brethren have put out, you're going to find this big push that they like to add to Scripture, and they'll try to say that they mean the same thing, and they don't. I've taught this before. We're really going to get into this study, but I've got to get some of this off my chest, brothers and sisters of Christ. I've taught this before. Words have meaning. And what is the enemy trying to do? He's trying to change the definition of words to mess you up so you don't find the real Jesus Christ. And if you have found the real Jesus Christ, to mess you up so you don't get as many rewards when you get to heaven. That you're not that... Uh, useful as a Christian. The Word of God is not as fruitful. We're going through a series of studies right now. This just God put this on my heart to put this study out first. It's going to be probably a three-hour study because there's a lot to go through. But have me put out a study of the things that are making uh, what I believe this Antichrist spirit in the world is using to destroy Christians is cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lusts of other things. So you are not fruitful as a Christian. You don't get many rewards. You're not leading as many people to Christ. In fact, you're setting a bad example and have a bad testimony. You lose your good testimony. That's what's going on. Okay? But what they're doing to, for this study here, when it comes to who Jesus truly is, look what's going on, brothers and Christ. Trinity and Godhead, they mean the same thing. No, they do not. Rapture and caught up mean the same thing. No, they do not. The Son of God and God the Son, they mean the same thing. No, they do not. They, they yell at us and say, we deny the Sonship of Jesus Christ when they're the ones that are denying it when they say Jesus is not the Father. When you say Jesus is not the Father, you're saying He's not the Son of, of God, being God the Father. The only begotten Son, born of, drive from, when he claimed God as his father, they were getting ready, we're going to talk about these scriptures, they were getting ready to stone him. Why? Because he was making himself equal with God. When you say son of God, you're saying that Jesus is the body of God the Father. That's the Godhead. But when you take son, we're going to really get into this, it just irks me. It, when you get son of God and you take away the of part, you sever that distinction, that connection that Jesus Christ has with God the Father, and you switch it around and make, him him, his, make himself his own little God by saying, God the Son. You take the word of, and you switch things around. And they tell you it's the same thing. It's not. Okay? The Great Tribulation as a title for that seven-year time period, so they can make it about the church when it's really called the time of Jacob's trouble. And I keep pushing this with the brethren. Stop using these false terms, period. Well, it's just what they know, so I said it's because it's what... No, you stop using them, period. Anytime you use them, you're promoting lies and hypocrisy. You don't say the time of Jacob's trouble falsely called the, the Great Tribulation because you're promoting the Great Tribulation as a title. Even if you say it's falsely called, you're still promoting it. You just say it's the time of Jacob's trouble. That seven-year period is the time of Jacob's trouble. And if someone asks you, well, what do you mean by that seven-year time of Jacob's trouble? Then you can reveal, hey, you might know, know it falsely called the time of uh, the Great Tribulation. Or they say, well, I've heard of the Great Tribulation, but what's the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, that's the true title for that time period. The Great Tribulation doesn't exist. We go through Great Tribulation today as Christians. But it's not a title for that time period. It opens doors but when you sit there and you keep saying, well, you know, rapture, you know, caught up, it, it means the same thing. 
The Bible says caught up, but you know, it means the same thing. It does not mean, I've proved it in Scripture, and by definition, rapture is not in Scripture, and the definition of rapture is not what's going to happen. But they try to change the definitions and say it means the same thing as caught up. It does not. I'll go through it again, brothers and sisters of Christ. We're walking along the body of Christ. We're in what's called the church age, from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. We're walking along. A big event has to happen to transition from dispensation to dispensation. And it's like we're going to trip and we're going to fall into the next dispensation, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. And God goes, no, you're not going into that time of Jacob's trouble. So he catches us before we fall and he pulls us up. We want to go. That blessed hope, it's a wonderful thing. Rapture, it's a taking by violence of a pleasing nature. It doesn't take anybody that long with the Holy Spirit to say, that's vile to use the word rapture. I'm not using the word rapture. But you still have brethren that use it. I watched one of Brother Brian's videos at King James Video Ministries. He slipped up and said it and said, you know what? I'm sorry, it's catching away the body of Christ, but you see how hard it is to get this stuff out of your vocabulary? It's been drilled into us. It's been really drilled into us that you can use these words in exchange for the other ones. Okay? You cannot do that. So we're going to go through this, starting at 1 John 4, 1, and we're going to go through this study, brothers and sisters of Christ. We're going to do expository study, and I'm going to show you some things that God really put on my heart to show you the true battle that's going on, when you put on the whole armor of God, the true battle that's going on is you're fighting to stand for the real Jesus Christ of Scripture and to live for Him in this wicked, wicked world. And what you're battling is an antichrist spirit. Remember what the Bible says, For we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why you have to put on the whole armor of God. Because we're fighting and battling this antichrist spirit every day that's in the world. This false God that's now in these last days really trying to disguise himself as Jesus Christ, preparing people for the time of Jacob's trouble when he comes in the flesh. The antichrist, you had the beast, uh, the dragon, and the false prophet. Okay, you got this antichrist that shows up in the flesh... That's what they're preparing people for, and we're here to fight it. Not physical battle, but spiritual. We're here to tell people, that's not the real Jesus Christ that you're worshiping. You're not truly saved and born again according to the Word of God. You've been deceived. You've been lied to. You've been promised the world when you can't have the world. People say, well, you want the world, you can have the world. That's a deception. Okay? You get out there in the world... And these people are miserable, and they put on, as long as they feed their flesh, the moment they stop feeding their flesh, they're miserable. Okay? That's what we're here for. So let's get started in 1 John 4, 1. It reads, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, here's the thing, brothers and sisters of Christ. False prophet, people think the Old Testament. But today... We are considered prophets. You say, how is that? What is a prophet? A prophet is somebody who tells the future. God puts it on their heart and says, you tell them what's going to happen to them in the future. If they don't repent, this is going to happen. Okay? Or even if they do come to me, I'll change things and make things better. It's future. You're prophesying the future. Prophets. Prophets were ones that told you what God was telling you. We have the Holy Spirit in us. It brings us into all truth. Okay, we're allowed to open the scriptures to each other. There's brethren that teach me the word of God. I'm teaching the word of God myself to other brothers and sisters in Christ out there. But prophets, okay. Why are we prophets today? When I preach the plan of salvation, I'm a prophet. You say, what are you talking about? I tell people, if you reject the real Jesus of scripture, refuse to repent which this easy believism movement is all about refusing to repent. You refuse to repent and believe in your heart. Remember that verse we read, we'll read it again. It's in the notes, but with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You can never believe in your heart if you skip repentance. True biblical repentance, godly sorrow for sinning against him. Having sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against God. You are a mess, you are wretched, you are poor, you are blind. Lord, help me. What do I do to be saved? 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay? Then you tell them to confess both in prayer and you ask God to save you. But when you talk about repentance, what's the being a prophet? What happens when you reject Jesus Christ? Do you tell people about hell? The lake of fire? In these last days, do you warn the brethren, or not brethren, you warn the brethren, hey, we don't got that much time left. I was, <laughs> sorry, that's why I get confused. You don't have much time left, you need to get busy for the Lord. But do you warn the lost world, like I've, I've warned my neighbors, I've told them, I've given them gospel tracts. They've rejected the real Jesus Christ. I've told them that when they hear a loud thunderous noise that's deafening and it hurts their ears, and they come to find me and I'm not here, that's because the body of Christ is left and you got left behind. Are you warning people about the time of Jacob's trouble? Okay, these are future events. Your future is an eternity in hell and then the lake of fire if you reject Jesus Christ. That's a prophet. Okay, you tell people about the time of Jacob's trouble. Prophet, through the word of God. Today we go through the word of God. The Holy Spirit opens the scriptures to us. The time of Jacob's trouble, um, millennial kingdom. When we talk about the new heaven and the new earth, this is all future. Okay? If you live by the flesh, what? Ye shall die. Future. Present tense to future. <laughs> you know? We're all prophets. It says many false prophets have gone out in the world. And as we keep reading, it talks about how they have the Antichrist spirit. And Paul, even in Paul's day, we're going to read how people were having an Antichrist spirit. But Acts chapter 20, verse 29, if you want to turn there. But keep your place in 1 John 4, 1. For I know this, that through... After my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Okay? People that are flat out lost. They're servants of Satan, and they're trying to come in, and they're trying to, to sp not sparing the flock. Scatter the flock, destroy as many Christians as possible. They even try to prevent as many people from getting saved, to motivate them to, keep, to choose the world over Jesus Christ. It was happening in Paul's day. But verse 30, it says, Also of your own selves shall men arise. Okay? You have people that are obviously wolves in sheep's clothing. But there's going to be people that look so good, like, Oh, I'm one of you. I'm a Christian just like you are. I'm one of you. That are really going to be infiltrating the body of Christ to try to fool us. Of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Now, I believe that this can also apply to some saved people. Okay? You get so puffed up in the ministry, you get so prideful, it becomes a respecter of persons, and you get people to praise you, and you love that. So when you say something that's perverse and goes against Scripture, you get people to follow you because I'm of Him. Okay? I remember uh, Peter Ruckman talking about a story once where I think John R. Rice, I think is what he's talking about, but somebody was correcting him, and they said, listen, he's our captain, and we're going to follow him. And he's saying, but the Bible says this, but John R. Rice says something completely contrary to Scripture. And I remember Peter Rucker saying that the, guy that the kid that was correcting him said, hey, I thought Jesus was the captain of our salvation. I don't know if we'll get, I'm getting ahead of myself, but there's that verse where Paul's like, were you baptized in my name? Were you baptized in the name of Philip Newton? Were you baptized in the name of Robert Breaker? We baptized in the name of Gene Kim. We baptized, evidently you were, for a lot of these people out there, they were, because they like to follow Robert Breaker, no matter how many times he goes against Scripture, so how many times he adds to Scripture, subtracts from Scripture, how worldly he is and fleshly he is, and promotes it's okay, how he promotes a false plan of salvation, but we're going to follow him because he's our captain. Oh yeah. And on and on and on. There's people that did it for Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries. They were a respecter of persons. And the moment he stepped on their toes or said something that they didn't like to hear, they did a 180 and became complete enemies of the ministry. Oh yeah. What's going on there? Okay, you got, of your own selves, some men speak perverse things, draw away disciples after them. Paul knew it. It was happening in his day. And you'll see why later why I'm saying these men are having the Antichrist spirit or they're being enticed by the Antichrist spirit. They're lost men that are coming in with an Antichrist spirit to deceive you. Are there men that are saved that are getting enticed and drawn away after the Antichrist spirit? The ways of the world, and they're getting all kinds of messed up. Verse 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn you, every one night and day with tears. Why? Because he knows how these people can step there 
and how they're going to be deceiving people. Look at what's going on out there today, brothers and sisters Christ. There's some people that I look at and go, how can you believe this stuff? People are so easily manipulated. The, the, you know, what's going on there? All the lies and the deceptions that are going on in the secular world. And people are just buying it. All the evidence, all the facts, all the absolute truth shows that they're lying to you and deceiving you. And they just go with it. And they buy it. And they turn around and end up promoting it. You know, deceivers being deceived, deceiving and being deceived. They're being deceived, and then they turn around and pass on that deception. But the same thing goes on when it comes to being a Christian. He knows that there's going to be fake Christians coming that put on a good show. They look really good, but they're false. Their words aren't always going to line up with their deeds. And when you back them in a corner, their words are going to change. They're going to start going against this book. Okay? Verse 32, and he, he knows how many, it's, it's, he's, the tears aren't for the lost, the tears are for the saved. He knew that a lot of these people were going to come in and start messing up saved sinners. People, I mean, you read about how it's like, I've had to preach this, the plan of salvation to the Corinthians over and over, because someone keeps coming in and messing up the gospel. They preach a no change life gospel. They, they preach a, the, there's, the changed life is just you got to keep the commandments in order to be saved in the book of uh, Galatians. You have people coming in and messing up the gospel, the changed life gospel. And he's having to preach it over and over. Speaking perverse things. Right? Verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace. I do the same thing. To God and the Word of His grace. Capital G, God, the Father, and the Word of His grace. Okay? Which is able to build you up, change life, get you in the right, go in the right path, go in the right direction, putting on the whole armor of God, living a life of Christ, giving you hope, true peace, true joy, and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. One of the things you can lose out on is your inheritance. That's one of those things uh, when you have a group, uh, Peter Ruckman did the seven things you can lose. Uh, one of the things I agree with him on is I wish he had used more scripture. I agree with him on everything he said there, but it was more for show. I just wish he would have used the Bible more. One of these days I might redo that study as far as making sure it's backed by scripture after scripture after scripture. But one of the things you can lose is your inheritance. You're saved, but you don't get to inherit the millennial kingdom. You you don't get to rule and reign with Jesus Christ because you're no longer suffering for Jesus Christ. The moment you give into the world and you start going the way of the world and you're truly saved and you start getting messed up, you're not suffering for Jesus Christ anymore. What if Jesus calls us up and you're in that state? Could you have lost out on your inheritance? Because you gave up and said, I'm not going to suffer for Jesus Christ anymore. I'm just going to go the way of the world. Be very careful. Now, when we read in that book, it says, speaking perverse things. Okay? What does that mean? Well, and going off with Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect, through the first unto all good works. Perverse things are things that go against the Scriptures. They go against the major doctrines. They go against instruction in righteousness. They go against correction. Oh, you're not allowed to judge. You're not allowed to judge. The Bible says we're allowed to judge. It commands us to judge. Paul right there is warning you about wolves in sheep's clothing. If you can't judge whether they're a wolf in sheep's clothing, what's the point in warning you about them? But you got people perverting that. Okay? Rebuke. Or reproof, I mean. You know, well, we're not supposed to. He's our captain and we're going to follow him regardless. This man, we're following him. And whatever he says, that's what we're going. You're not supposed to reprove him. See that? That's what the speaking perverse things, okay? Another thing is given a light, like I said, instruction and righteousness, given a light attitude towards sin. Justifies it. All you can sin all you want, put it under the cross. Take your God gives you this little credit card that you swipe through the machine every time you sin, so you can just charge it to the cross. Charge it to the cross. You can sin that grace may abound. What did Paul say about that? He said, Are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? But there's this big push that you can still be a, the sinner, of the, you know, you can still be carnally minded and walking after the flesh and be a Christian. 
What does the Bible say? It says, no, that's a contradiction. The Bible says you can only be in two states. You can be spiritually, capital S, spiritually minded, walking after the Spirit, or you can be carnally minded, walking after the flesh. You can't be both. Either you're saved or you're lost. There is no in-between. There is no lukewarm. Okay? I'm still a sinner to this day. I failed the Lord this last winter. Fell into some games and TV shows for a month, month and a half. Okay? I failed the Lord. I'm not teaching sinless perfection. But God picks me back up. I dropped my cross. I had to drop my pride. I had to deny myself. Deny that sin. Repent. Forsake. Pick up my cross daily. Then I'm able to get back to where I left off with the Lord. If you don't repent and you don't forsake, you don't deny yourself, you don't pick up that cross daily, you cannot get back to where you left off with the Lord. I'm telling you that right now from experience, and there's a lot of other brothers and sisters in Christ out there that have the same testimony, that when they fail the Lord and fall apart, they cannot get back to their walk with the Lord until they've denied themselves and picked up their cross. Repent, forsake. Okay? That's as a saved sinner. You can't do that when you're lost. Okay? But they're promoting an easy, lighter attitude towards sin. That's what this Antichrist Christ spirit promises you, the world. You can have all the sins you want and be a Christian and go to heaven. You can live however you want. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. You can decide what's good and what's not. Is that the Jesus of the King James Bible? No. That's the Antichrist spirit. Okay? Ultimately, when it's talking about speaking perverse things, when you watch people and they try to be a snake and they try to slither false things in and everything, you know, that talks about good words and fair speech is deceiving the hearts of the simple. People that don't know this book because they're not reading this book and they're not hiding this book in their heart and they're not living this book. The King James Bible for English-speaking people. God's perfect written word. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. They're not hiding God's word in their heart, so someone comes along with good words and fair speeches, and they're easily deceived. Just like that. Okay? Ultimately, speaking perverse things is going against final authority. Is this book, I mean, you have people, that's why Paul was crying. You've got people out there, men out there, that are just wicked as can be, servants of Satan, antichrist spirit, that say they're King James Bible believers. But we catch them time and time again going against the book. Over and over and over. They make themselves the final authority. They make you the final authority, which is, which, which is pleasing to people. It's what attracts a lot of people to those false ministries. You get to be the final authority. You can decide what's okay and what's not okay. Okay, That's the speaking perverse things. As Christians, someone who's saved, can you slip up and start speaking perverse things? I'll use myself as an example. I used to say Trinity. I didn't fully understand it, but I used to say Trinity. God and three persons. God the Father, which is scriptural. God the Son, which is anti-scripture. We're going to find out in the study. It's anti-scripture. And God the Holy Spirit, which is anti-scripture. You sever the connection that the Spirit has to God the Father, and you separate the connection that the Son of God has with the Father, and you make them their own lesser gods, lowercase g gods. All right. I've been a PWC before. And a lot of times in my life, when I first got saved, I was a false convert most of my life. Got saved when I was 35. 35, 36. Okay. I've been taught a lot of lies and deception that God had to get out, and there's a lot of vocabulary that I was promoting that was promoting uh, perverse things that I was saying. Okay, I used to say rapture all the time. I don't anymore. It's caught up. Okay. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the great tribulation. Like I said, God had to work on me. Someone who's truly saved, born again, they're going to have a love for his word and hide it in their heart, and they're going to live it. What's that example of living it? Oh, I got to show that Capital T Trinity is not a title for God anymore. It's, actually, it's Godhead. That's what he chose in his perfect word. I'm only going to say Godhead. You're living it. I'm only going to say Godhead. Okay? Can a Christian get messed up to the point where they're promoting perverse things? Being a PWC, Polly want a cracker. Being a parrot, well, I'm just parroting what someone else said, and you get so stuck in your vocabulary, it's hard to get it out. But God will get it out of your vocabulary. You gotta drop the pride. 
There's some brethren that they're struggling with it really hardcore, and you can see the pride when they slip up and say the wrong thing, and then they turn around and try to justify it. That's pride. They're trying to justify saying things the wrong way. And they need to drop that pride. Okay. The next part of those verses we read in Acts 20 to 29, it says, draw away disciples after them. We've already kind of talked about it, you know. They're our captain. These guys thrive on getting people to follow them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I know Paul said, be followers of me. And they say, well, Paul said that. But if you keep reading, it says, be followers of me as I am of Christ. Then Paul goes on to talk about examples. We're supposed to set an example on how a Christian follows Christ. I, I want you to follow my example as long as it lines up with this. But this is the final authority. You hold me accountable to this book. If I'm not following this book, then you're not supposed to be following me. And I'm not talking about you have to throw me away if I make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm talking about you correct me. I'm talking about in that situation that I'm failing the Lord, and I, what I'm saying or what I'm doing is going against Scripture, you don't follow that example. You don't follow me in that area. You show where I'm wrong. Okay? You don't just throw people away like that. Because they make a mistake or they're off in an area. You try to correct them through the scriptures. Right? But they try to draw away disciples after them. That this Babel building, the whole thing about these Babel buildings is a cult of personality. That's their captain. And regardless of what he says, we got to follow him. And when you first start going there, that's not your attitude. But you, t I, I was in these Babel buildings. I was raised in some of these Babel buildings. Um, that's the, what happened. You go into it saying, okay, I love the Word of God, and this is my final authority, and you've got people that go into that, those battle buildings, and after a year or two, they're no longer, this is no longer their authority. It's the man that's standing up there. Whatever he says, I've got to follow him. What happened? They fell in the trap of being one of these disciples that have been drawn away after these wolves in sheep's clothing, these men speaking perverse things, these false prophets. Okay. 1 Corinthians 1.3, you don't have to turn here, but it says, is Christ, this is the verse I was talking about, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? It's that simple. Are you following the man, Jesus Christ? Am I, when you, do you see Jesus Christ in me because I'm lining up with the book? That's what the whole point is. When Paul says, be followers of me as I am of Christ, he talks about he's setting the example that Jesus set. That Jesus told him, this is how we're supposed to live, and you can hold me accountable to it. Right? John 12, 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Why do we have so many denominations, Babel buildings in one area? This whole thing about these people that I'm going to follow Robert Breaker because he says it's the Trinity, we're going to, we're going to stick with the Trinity. It's not in Scripture. Ex-Catholics for Christ. I'm a heretic because I said I'm not going to use the, the term Trinity as a title for God because it's not in Scripture. What does the Scripture say? Godhead. So I'm going to use Godhead instead because that's what God chose. And he, I'm a heretic according to him. He said amen to body, soul, and spirit. There's only one person of the Godhead, but he likes saying three persons. Okay? Person by definition, by the King James Bible, it has to have a body, soul, and always refer to someone who's living to be a person. They'll deny that they believe that God is, has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, and the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, and Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, separate from God, the Father, and the soul, and the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. They'll deny it, but then why say God in three persons then? You're lying. You're promoting a lie. They try to change definitions. Okay? But why do we have these denominations and battle buildings in every area? The Antichrist spirit is all about letting you be as gods, knowing good and evil. You get to dictate what kind of god you want to follow, or gods, plural, that you want to follow. Anything to prevent you from following the one true God of Scripture. You get to shop around. Find a Jesus Christ that best fits you that conforms to you. It's that Antichrist spirit. That's why we have all these denominations. The Old Testament, when he wrote the letter to the church of Corinth, it wasn't the churches, you know, plural, all these different buildings and everything, and all these different little groups that this one doesn't quite 
get along with this one, and this one doesn't believe exactly what this one believes. And uh, there was none of that junk, that Satanism. One church at Corinth, one church at Galatia, the church at Galatia. What is going on? The Antichrist spirit that's even in the world. I want a Jesus that conforms to me. I have to find the captain I want to follow, and that is not the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I get from him. I want the Jesus Christ that I want to follow. I want my own captain. I want to be the captain. You get that a lot too. They want to, they're their own Lord. If Jesus is truly Lord to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, a Lord commands and you follow. You have a changed life because God comes into your life. Jesus is capital L Lord, the Father, God the Father. He's truly God. And He commands you and He tells you what to do. But what's going on? People are being told, well, you can say Jesus is your Lord, but you can actually be your own Lord of your life. Jesus doesn't have to be Lord of your life. You can be the Lord of your life. You can decide what commands you want to follow and what commands you don't want to follow. That's that Antichrist spirit trying to promise them the world and that they can go to heaven. And when they wind up at, at standing before Jesus Christ or flat out on their face before Jesus Christ at the great white throne, getting ready to be tossed in the lake of fire for all eternity, they only have themselves to blame because the truth is out there. If they wanted the truth, God would show it to them. When they don't want the truth, God will let them believe a lie. It's that simple. Okay. I also want to bring up here, turn to Philippians 3.13, the part in Acts 20.29, 20, remember we're talking about false prophets of your own selves. Okay. This is so important. Of your own selves shall man arise speaking perverse things. Philippians 3.13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I've had to tell it to a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ. The past is the past. Let it go. Well, I failed the Lord pretty bad. Let it go. Did you repent and forsake? Did you move on? Did you get back to your walk with the Lord? You're going 100% for the Lord right now. Yeah. Hey, let it go. It's the past. There's times where I can even get drawn into the sins that I committed when I was lost. And start dwelling on them. And it's like... The things that were, uh, but the what? Uh, forgetting those things which are behind. Let it go. You'll have to revisit er your whole life as a Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. But the mistakes you've made as a Christian, let it go and make sure it stays in the past. That you do your best not to repeat them again. Let it go. I have had to tell people, brother, than that. Verse fourteen. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. Keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ, earning rewards, crown of rewards, okay? That blessed hope. Price, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God in Christ? No, 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 no. It's supposed to be God the Son. No, because that separates them. There's no connection. That's what we're going to get into this study. God in Christ. God the Father is in Christ Jesus. The soul. Jesus is the body. Okay. Verse 15. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. We say we can be perfect. I've done a study in the past. I know some of the brethren have. When it's talking about being perfect, it's talking about having a perfect heart. Remember? With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Unto righteousness. God's righteousness gets imputed to you, and he tells you, starts commanding you, do this, don't do this, do that, don't do that. But the perfect heart, okay, perfect heart has sorrow in it every time you fail the Lord. That was the difference. That's why King David was a man after God's own heart. He had sorrow in his heart when he screwed up and failed the Lord. He didn't get all puffed up and prideful. He had sorrow in his heart. Okay? His heart... His desire in his heart was to please God. Sin doesn't please God. God, get it out of my life. Going the way of the world doesn't please God. Speaking perverse things doesn't please God. 
your heart's desire is to please God. And, when you, and even though you can, you're going to fail sometimes, that heartfelt desire is what the Bible is talking about when it says you have a perfect heart when you're being perfect before the Lord. It's not talking about sinless perfection. It's talking about that heartfelt desire to please God. Be thus minded, and if any, let's see, but and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 16. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same things. One of the worst teachings a Bible believing, God fearing man can do is teach that there are things we can agree to disagree on. And so this is the worst thing that a person, a brother or sister in Christ, a sister in Christ can pass it on, but a brother in Christ in ministry, women aren't supposed to be in ministry, but a brother in Christ that's in ministry, it's the worst teaching he can ever have is to teach that there's things we can agree to disagree on. There isn't anything to agree to disagree on. We are all supposed to be of the same mind. Let us mind the same things. The Bible talks about being of one mind or one body. When you start teaching that there's th that um, there's things in this Bible that we can agree to disagree on, what happens? Remember we just talked about why is there so many different Bible buildings in one area? So many different denominations. Because they have that same attitude. There's things that we can agree to disagree on, on so you can shop around. See where that leads? There's not one thing in Scripture that we can agree to disagree on. There's things in Scripture where it tells us we have a choice. When it comes to meats, we have a choice. But we're all supposed to be of one mind. Everybody has a choice. If you want to eat, the, the, there's no unclean meats anymore. God has made it all clean through prayer and sanctification. Okay? It's all clean. You can choose. If you want to eat meats, the unclean meats, fine. If you don't want to eat the unclean meats, fine. We're all of one mind. You can choose. Holy days, not holidays, holy days. God designed, the God's one that determines what's a holy day. If you want to keep a holy day, fine. If you don't want to keep a holy day, fine. We're all of one mind. Okay? The worst teaching that you could ever come across is when a brother falls into the trap of teaching that there are things we can agree to disagree on. Okay? Be very careful. I'm not saying people who teach that have an Antichrist spirit, but it's definitely working for the Antichrist spirit. Because look at the world. Look at all these Babel buildings. Look how people shop around for the building they want to go to. Look how they shop around for what Bible version they want. There's things that we can agree to disagree on. It's a dangerous, dangerous teaching. Don't ever fall into it. And if you're a brother in Christ out there and you've done a teaching like that, you need to take that teaching down. Serious. It promotes the Antichrist spirit. There's things we can agree to disagree on. No, there isn't. Let us mind the same things. Okay? Verse 17. Brethren, be, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so you have us for an example. Remember what I said, another passage that talks about Paul says, Be followers of me as I am of Christ. So when see, Paul says, Be followers of me, he's not saying, I was baptized for you. We already read that. He totally corrects them when they start being, becoming a respecter of persons and following a person that isn't following Jesus Christ. They know he isn't. So instead of throwing them to the side saying, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ, they're following that person, becoming a respecter of persons. Paul's not saying you're supposed to follow me because I was baptized for you. He's saying... You follow me as I am, a, as I follow Jesus Christ, okay? And mark them which walk as you have us for an example, whether in word or deed. If Jesus is truly capital L, Lord of your life, capital L, Lord in the Old Testament, people would call God the Father Lord. They didn't know about the Godhead. It wasn't revealed to them then, okay? So Lord was a reference to God the Father, in the Old Testament, but we find out in the New Testament that that's actually Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. They're one and the same. Body, soul, connected, which makes them one. They're one and the same. Okay? I and my Father are one. How can you argue with that? Well, well, Antichrist spirit. That's what we're going to get through this study. Okay? 
but we have us for an example. Are you setting a good example for Jesus Christ? For the brethren? I know people out there, I failed the Lord, I've set a bad example, I've lost testimonies. A lot of us have, brothers and sisters of Christ, but we got to keep going. Behind us, put it behind us, and keep going. We're going to have to live with it sometimes that with some people we, we just can't reach them because we lost our testimony with them because we failed the Lord and set a bad example. And pray that somebody else comes along and reaches them. Sometimes you're going to have to live with the loss of your testimony. Sometimes you can get it back. Verse 18, But why is this a big push for Paul? For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. You know the false, biggest false gospel that's out there is the fact that there's no changed life. I did a preaching on this about um, the resurrection gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 through 4 when it talks about how you can believe in vain. If you read the whole chapter, he's saying that he's telling the Corinthians by the life you're living, you're denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Your belief, your head belief, oh, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, is in vain because you're not living it. You're not a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old man has to be dead and buried and crucified with Christ so Christ can raise you as a new creature in Christ Jesus, a new man. There's no new man with a lot of those people in 1 and 2 Corinthians. He's denying it. They're denying the resurrection. That's what this easy believism is all about. These people with the lives they're living, they're denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I call them out on it. They're the enemies of the cross of Christ. But they have good words and fair speeches. They tell people, the lost world what they want to hear. You can be a Christian and have your sin. You can be a Christian and have the world. Absolutely. And they like to add to those scriptures, faith alone. Brother Christ, call them out on it. Chapter and verse where it says, faith alone. I forget what verse it is. It says, faith without works is being dead alone. And it's talking about the a time, in Hebrews, talking, I think it's Hebrews, talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. But for instruction in righteousness, true faith, the evidence of true faith is that you're living it. Okay? It's vain your belief is vain when there's no evidence. When you're not living that changed life, proving that Jesus was raised from the dead, and He raised me from the dead. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. My family doesn't recognize me. My mom keeps saying, you're just not the same person you were before. Amen. That's supposed to be there. Okay? They are the enemies of the cross of Christ. The false gospel is being pushed out there as they're pushing an antichrist Jesus who's okay with sin, who didn't really raise from the dead because you don't have to have a changed life. Therefore, he didn't really raise from the dead. He's not really God fully and completely. That's the antichrist spirit. That's the gospel that appeals to everybody. It appeals to my ex-wife. She's gone over, I mean, totally gone over to the easy believism. She even said repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. No sorrow for your sins, your personal sins that you've sinned against God. No sorrow whatsoever. It's just unbelief to belief. She's an enemy of the cross of Christ. All these easy believism people, preachers. Robert Breaker, Edward P.F. All of them. They're the enemies of the cross of Christ. They have an antichrist spirit, and they're promoting that antichrist spirit. And you can tell today, because we're going to get back to the study, the, being false prophets, but today they're pushing that this Jesus that's not God, capital G, God. They're playing with words to confuse people, but you go off the scriptures and you look at them, they're taking capital G, God, and making it a lowercase g, God. That's the Jesus they promote, the God, lowercase g, God of this world who have blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious gospel should shine unto them. That's what's going on out there. And we're seeing these people that are uh, goats among the sheep, 
and God's showing us that's a goat. Man, he put on a great show for a long while, but eventually it came, it came out, he's a goat. Oh, look at this Christian, I believe he's saved, but he's gone the way of the goats. He's a sheep hanging out with the goats, and he's going the way of the goats. And we're seeing that more and more today. We're dropping like flies. People are going the way of the world, through cares of this world, like fear. There's a lot of fear-mongering going on right now. Deceitfulness of riches. If I can just have a little bit more, I'll be happy. Lust of other things. The false gospel. You can keep your sins. You can live however you want. And at the end, if we were wrong, and at the end you stand before Jesus Christ, and we were wrong, and those were really sins, and you really should have done them. Oh, who cares? You charged it. You're under the blood. You charged it. It's on the cross. No sorrow for sin. No repentance. And it messes Christians up. You start falling in the way of the world. Don't become an enemy of the cross of Christ. I'm sorry. I, don't, I can't see how a truly saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman would become an, uh, an enemy of the cross of Christ. But you can set a bad example. You can start, looking like, start trying to resurrect the old man, start going back to looking like, acting like, and you can, can really mess your life as a Christian, and you're going to be miserable as, as a Christian. It's going to eat at you. You're going to start having a burden, and it's going to eat at you. And eventually, God's going to chasten you if you don't repent and get you back on the right track. If you refuse to repent as a Christian, someone who's saved, that's where the Bible talks about giving them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the soul may be saved. If you're going to fall away to this antichrist spirit and this way this world's going, your flesh will be destroyed. God will kill you and bring you home early so the soul may be saved. Okay, sometimes it'll take really hardcore destruction of the flesh to lead people to the real Jesus Christ. I understand that. Okay. But they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. How can you tell? What did we just talk about? They want a Jesus that suits them, that conforms to them. Well, if you have to find a Jesus that conforms to you, who's your God? Who's your real God? It says here, whose end is destruction, like a fire, whose God is their belly, and his glory is in their shame. When I got shown that capital T Trinity isn't a title for God in the scriptures, I was ashamed of myself. That I, was, I was like, really, Lord? I was promoting a false God? Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I was ashamed. I didn't glory in my shame. I had sorrow. And this isn't me patting on the back. I'm, this is me saying, you guys, brother and sister Christ, if you ever start using these false terms and... You should have sorrow. Okay? When you do something that shames the Lord, which pervert, speaking perverse things, going against His Word, is the ultimate thing that's going to shame the Lord. Because when you start speaking perverse things, you start living after those perverse things. And you shame the Lord. Okay? The biggest thing, like I said, proclaiming, because I have it in my notes, proclaim to be a Bible believer that defend the Trinity to the death. You shame the Lord. I don't believe someone who's truly saved and born again is going to continue to defend the Trinity to the death. I've had people that really got on to me, really, you know, slapped me in the face, basically. I want the Trinity, and blah, blah, blah. And then, a few months down the road, they came and apologized to me and said, You know what? I'm sorry. I, I got so prideful. You're, the Scriptures don't say capital T Trinity. I don't want it in my life. Can a Christian at first vehemently defend it? Yeah. Can they later come by and say, hey, that was pride. I was being a respecter of persons. I was following a man, and that man wasn't Jesus Christ. Okay? Spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. After the rudiments of the world, after the traditions of men, and not after Christ. I got deceived into going the opposite direction. I wasn't going after Christ anymore. And that's the whole point of the Antichrist spirit, is to keep you from going after Christ, the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, who mind earthly things. Who's the lowercase g God of this world? Satan. What does the Antichrist spirit promise you? The world. And get you to mind earthly things. How do they get a, a brother or sister of Christ off track from following the Lord? The cares of this world. Get you to start minding earthly things. Okay? Verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, not God the Spirit, 
the Spirit, capitalized Spirit of God, opens this book to us, and our conversation is in heaven. The Bible says that our soul, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. He that heareth us, we're going to get to that in this, in this chapter, okay, he that heareth us, heareth God, because we are of God. Okay. From whence also we look for the Savior, the capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know none of them claim God the Lord, but that's basically what they're doing. They're trying to say, well, Lord is actually a title that can be used for another God, a separate God from God the Father. But it says here that we look to our Savior, the capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. What is the Antichrist spirit trying to do? It tries to prevent you, brothers and sisters, from looking for the capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. Is He Lord of your life? Looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day is living a life of Christ every day because He could come back at any moment. Am I living a life of Christ? That's what it means to look for Jesus Christ. That blessed hope. He could come back any day now. I'm starting to see some of the brethren waver, and they're starting to preach that he might not come back for another six to eight months, or he might not come back for another two or three years. That is dangerous. Get that out of your head. He can come back any day now. You need to live every day for the Lord. Every day. He can come back any day now. It's dangerous. I'm sorry to raise my voice, but he's dangerous. Be careful. Don't start falling away from the Lord and giving in to the Antichrist spirit of the world and start saying, well, Jesus won't come back today. He'll come back in a little bit. Or maybe a little bit longer. Or maybe a little bit longer. And then eventually you're going to get to, well, I don't know if he's really coming back. Well, maybe he's not coming. See where it leads? The Bible teaches even Paul believed in his time that Jesus could come back in his time. Anybody preaches that Paul knew, Paul preached that Jesus wasn't going to come back in his time. They're a liar. They're a deceiver. They're, spe they're speaking perverse things. Jesus can come back any day. Are, is he Lord of your life today? Oh, you can be Lord of my life in a year or two because Jesus isn't coming back for another fight. No, he's the Lord of your life today. He's God manifest in the flesh in your life today. That's what it means. That we're looking for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that blessed hope. The biggest push is you can be as God's knowing good and evil. And that's the big push. And like I said, you don't keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, and you take your eyes off of Jesus Christ, and you start minding the things of the world, and you get your eyes on the world, you're going to get messed up as a Christian. And I see it in men in ministry, and I keep praying for them. I'm like, where's the Bible studies? Where's the studies that keep people's eyes on Jesus Christ? And all they're putting out is stuff that keeps people's eyes on the world. And it's breaking my heart. I'm praying for them night and day with tears. Okay? But this lost world, this Antichrist spirit, is like, you can be as God's knowing good and evil. I'm smarter than God, I can correct God's word. And what happens? They become an enemy of the cross of Christ. Even as a Christian, if you start falling back, you got saved off of repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. That's what you got saved off of. And you start backpedaling and you start going the way of the world, you become an enemy of the cross of Christ. And God's going to chasten you. Giving you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. If you refuse to repent and get back on the right path, God will kill you and bring you home early. How can you tell that a lot of these people are face, fake? Edward P.F., he was weaseling his way in. He's a weasel. And I'm not calling him a name. I'm talking about, I have chickens. I know how these things do. They have to make their way through little holes. And it's amazing how they can make it through a little hole. And they sneak their way in. Okay? Like a snake. To get into places where they don't belong. They don't line up. They don't belong in my chicken coop. Okay? Oh, I believe that gospel, I believe that gospel. And you look at him now, he's an enemy of, that, of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. After professing that he believed in it, he's an enemy of it. You can be as God's, knowing good and evil. I'm smarter than God, I can correct God's word, and that's what he does. Have nothing to do with him. After the first and second admonition from a heretic, reject. 
He that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Try to say it right. Okay. We look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 11.4. This is the biggest thing. Paul was warning him. This is what I mean by this is bringing it all together. Paul was warning of an Antichrist spirit back then. You think it's just John. It's not just John warning us of the Antichrist spirit. He's warning the Corinthians, there's an Antichrist spirit among you, and you need to get, get it out. 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, you know, God the Son. It's, we get through the study. God the Son and Son of God are contrary one to another. They contradict one another. Son of God. Of. He's connected. He's part of. They are one. You take the of away and you take God and you bring it to the front. You have to make it a lowercase g God if you're truly a Bible believer. Because there's only one capital G God, the Father. Okay? There's people preaching another Jesus, an Antichrist, whom we have not preached. Paul has never preached God the Son. Paul has never preached God the Spirit of God. You know, God the Holy Spirit. He's never preached God in three persons. He's never preached the capital T Trinity as a title for God. What's going on? Whom we have not preached. They're preaching a false Jesus. Or if you receive another spirit. What's going on? Antichrist spirit. That's what Paul's talking about here. You're receiving another spirit. That we have not received. Let's see, which, which ye have not received. In other words, you haven't received the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which is God, they're equal, they're one and the same. The distinction is body, soul, and spirit. The Bible says, for the Holy Spirit, whatever He hears, that shall He speak. God the Father talks to us through the Holy Spirit. They're connected. That's why when you say Spirit of God, they're connected. When you say God the Spirit, you sever that connection. You're worshiping. You have an, that's an antichrist spirit. You're worshiping a false god, the lowercase g god of this world. It's that simple. Or another gospel which ye have not which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And the but well bear with him is talking about Satan. You'll go to hell and burn and toss into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. Your belief will be in vain. Oh, we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. Where's the changed life? Oh, there doesn't have to be a changed life. You're denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ with the life that you live. And your heart doesn't believe in it. You have head belief, death, burial, and resurrection. But in your heart, you're denying the resurrection when you deny changed life after salvation. The new creature in Christ Jesus. Old man is dead and buried and crucified with Christ. You might well bear with him. Paul was warning them of an antichrist spirit that they would be that in the future, not in the future, even then in 1 and 2 Corinthians, they were promoting an antichrist spirit. They were coming in and promoting a false Jesus that has no basis in Scripture. It's not the Jesus that, that Paul met on the way to Damascus. Now, it's become very evident, you look at these people, Greg Miller, ex-Catholics for Christ, Robert Breaker, um, even uh, Steve Anderson, I don't know if he's still out there anymore, but like I said, he's gone the way of the world, and the world's always destruction, you know? It doesn't mean you're going to have light, that's the lie, that you're going to have a great life and choose the world. Um, King's Table, Edward P.F., all these Babel buildings. You have these people that when they're told the truth about the true Godhead and the Jesus of Scripture, what is their reaction? Okay. These people with the Antichrist spirit hate the Jesus of the King James Bible. The Jesus of the Godhead. They hate Him. And it shows. Why? Because they hate us. When we're going to read through this, ver uh, this chapter, as we get through, we're supposed to 
loving who Jesus is, the real Jesus of the Godhead, who is God the Father, goes hand in hand with loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? I have grace for brethren. Like I said, that guy that was yelling at me and just smacked me across the face, I got to the point where I think I always do this. I just link the gospel, and I'm done. Lord, you take care of him. He might be saved, and he's just really messed up. He might be lost. Err on the side of caution, plus the Bible always says you treat him as a heathen man and a publican. They've been corrected by me, they've been corrected by the brethren, they've been corrected by the church as a whole, the body of Christ. Let him be as a heathen man and pumpkin. And then they come back later and they realize, okay, I apologize for being so prideful. You're right. The scriptures are right. They line, you line up with the scriptures. The people I was following don't line up with the scriptures. And they apologize. But why does anger and hatred go hand in hand with this antichrist spirit towards people who are truly saved and born again? People say, oh, you ha well, you have hatred, you have hatred, you hate Edward P.F. No, I don't. I tried witnessing to him. He wanted nothing to do with the true plan of salvation. He wants nothing to do with the Jesus Christ of the Godhead. I tried witnessing to him. If I hated him, I wouldn't have given him the time of day. And I'm talking about in a positive way. Witnessing to him is a positive thing. Okay? Putting him down personally, which some of the brethren have, that's not, that's not loving him. Okay? True love is you preach truth. You let him know the truth. You preach the plan of salvation, the true plan of salvation. Take it or leave it. I tried talking to Robert Breaker. I don't hate him. I don't have anger towards him. But why do these people have anger and hatred towards us Bible-believing Christians? Ex-Catholics for Christ. I am a heretic according to them because I say capital T Trinity is not a title for God in the Scriptures. I profess to be a King James Bible believer. I'm going to go with the Scriptures say. That's what a King James Bible believer does. They profess to be King James Bible believers, but they reject the scriptures and they go for pagan trinity. And they hate us. I'm a, I'm a heretic. What did Satan offer Jesus and what does the Antichrist spirit offer them? The world. Time and time again, he just keeps offering them the world over and over and over. And I've always taught this, brother, sister, uh, not always, it's something kind of new, I don't want to lie, because sometimes I get used to saying some things, and you end up saying something like, wait a minute, I want to correct myself. Someone's brought it to my attention kind of recently, and I've mentioned it in some of my studies, but controlled opposition. you got to be very careful of controlled opposition. You have people that look like Bible-believing Christians, and they'll even sound like Bible-believing Christians, but there's certain lines they're not allowed to cross, because they're controlled opposition. And I, I, pr I pray that I'm wrong with ex-Catholics for Christ. But there's times where I think they might be controlled opposition. Why? Because they can say anything they want about the Catholic Church, but they're not, the line that they're not allowed to cross is you don't go against the Trinity. God in three persons. Lowercase g, God's God in three persons. Okay? Lower g, lowercase g, you make God the Father a lowercase g God when you say God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. But don't you dare go against this. You can say anything else you want about the Catholic Church, but don't you dare go against this. I looked up the word Maranatha. They were using Maranatha or something like that, and I looked at it and I was like, that's Catholic. And someone can prove me wrong that there was some other, but a lot of the Christians that were coming away from Catholicism carried a lot of Catholicism with them. They wanted to the reform that's why you had the Reformation. They wanted to reform the Catholic Church. They didn't want to have nothing to do with it, like the Waldensians. And you could tell because the Catholic Church wanted to destroy it. I think they did. I got the book. I need to read it. About the Waldensians. They wanted to destroy it. I think they did destroy the Waldensians. But they didn't go after Martin Luther and try to destroy him completely. Why? Because he wasn't going against Catholicism fully and completely. He just wanted to reform it. And they carried a lot of bad things with them. Okay. But be careful of controlled opposition. You have false prophets, they're controlled oppositions. They come in acting like I'm one of you, and they'll say the things that you want to hear, like the line up with scripture sometimes, but after a while, they'll slowly pull you away from those things. They're controlled opposition. I'm on your side when, in fact, their father is Satan. Okay. There's some things they can say bad about Satan. But then there's some things they can't. 
Okay. Saul was an enemy of the cross of Christ. People say, Saul, you're talking about the Old Testament? No, I'm talking about before Paul became Paul. Saul was an enemy of the cross of Christ. Okay? The Jews as a whole did not believe Jesus is God the Father. They didn't believe Jesus is God fully and completely. They believed in only one God, and that God is the Father. And when Jesus said that God was his Father, he was making himself equal to God. Think of that. Paul, before he became Paul, when he was Saul, he was an enemy of the cross of Christ. He thought he was doing God's work, the Lord's work, killing Christians. Now my question, I'm going to do a whole other study on this courageous man, foolish man, Saul to Paul. But it says, how did Saul react to the truth? Later becoming Paul, okay, like I said, I'm going to do a completely separate study than this called Crazy Man, Foolish Man, Saul. Saul finds out that Jesus is God the Father, something along those lines. I haven't got the title exactly down because I still got to put a lot of the study together. But you go back and you find out the reason the Jewish people were attacking Jesus Christ is he was claiming to be God the Father. And when he said God is his Father, and that he's the son, capital S, son of God. He's making himself equal to God, and they were attacking him. And you look at Paul, and it's not in my notes because I want to do it on the other study, but Paul, who was Saul, when he first gets blinded, or before he gets blinded, and he's on the road to Damascus, he looks up and says, Who art thou, comma, Lord, question mark? Is this God the Father? Is this God? And then Jesus goes, It is Jesus whom thou persecutest. What was Paul's reaction? Oh, well then it's not God the Father, it's not Lord. It's No, he said, oh Lord, capital Lord, what will that have me to do? Oh, Jesus, you are God the Father? I'm, I'm not trying to add scripture, but I'm just saying that a lot of these people are realizing, hey, I've been following a false God. I was a false convert for most of my life. I was following an antichrist. I was following a false Jesus. And when God finally brought me to my knees in true biblical repentance, Lord, who art thou, Lord? The real Jesus Christ was preached to me. The Christ, Jesus Christ of the King James Bible was preached to me. Lord, what would thou have me to do? I've already repented. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. What was Paul's reaction when he found out he was attacking and being an enemy of the cross of Christ. He converted. It's that simple. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're promoting this pagan trinity, you need to repent and convert to the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, who is capital L Lord. The only way you can say that is if you believe he's God the Father, fully and completely God. Oh, he's not God the Father. Then he's not your Lord, capital L Lord. Go back to 1 John 4, 2. Sorry that was a long thing on, on the first verse, but go back to uh, 1 John 4, 2. I just want to get that out. False prophets. We're really pushing this, brothers and sisters of Christ. False prophets are out there. 1 John 4, 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, capital S, Spirit of God. Not God the Spirit. Why? Because when you say God the Spirit, you sever the connection that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has with God the Father. Of God. Capital S Spirit of God the Father. They're connected. They're one. Whatever the Spirit heareth, that shall he speak. God the Father speaks to the body of Christ through the Holy Spirit because they are connected. They are one. And when you say the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Spirit, you're severing that connection. And then you have a line to the center, but they're all God. You've severed the connection. There is no connection when you say God the, uh, the Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. You severed the connection. It's now God of His own, a separate lowercase g God. Hopefully you're following along with this. God says, Spirit of God. Here I know the Spirit of God. Someone has the Holy Spirit in them. Romans 1.25 reads, Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. No, it's God the Son. 
You change the truth of God into a lie, because the truth of God says Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, it's the Spirit of God. And you change it to God the Spirit. The truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. Okay? I can make a God that conforms to me, and I get to be God. You start serving the creature more than the Creator. Notice in Romans, if you didn't have to turn there, but Romans 1.25, it's a capital C on Creator. Lowercase c on creature. Talk about men trying to be God. They're not serving the Creator. God the Father created all things, but then Jesus Christ created all things. Then the Holy Spirit created all things. Why? Because they're all one. There's scripture to back all three, where God created all things. But then it says God commended His Son who created all things. Okay, who is blessed forever. Amen. They try to change it from Spirit of God to God the Spirit. They sever that connection that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has with God the Father. They're just all one in essence. They're all capital G God, but they're their own separate lowercase g gods. And they'll lie to you. No, no, they're all capital G gods that make up one capital G God. Then you have four gods. The Bible doesn't teach that. They turn the truth of God into a lie. They're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Every spirit, talk about us as men, mankind, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Now people get stuck on in the flesh. I'm not saying ignore it. It's saying that the body, Jesus Christ, which is the body, is God manifest in the flesh. The soul is in them. They're connected. They are one. Jesus is God because God the Father is in him and connected to him. They are one. But is come is what people forget to look at. Is come is a statement that you can only make about God the Father. Eternal. From the beginning to the end. Alpha and Omega. Eternal. Is of God. Capital G God. Is Jesus Lord of your life? No. Then you are not of God. You do not confess from your heart. Because if you believed it, it's in your heart. And when you confess, it comes from the heart, which means you live it. You do everything in your power to live it, if you believe something. Okay? If you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God, then you believe Jesus is capital L Lord, the capital L Lord. He's Lord of your life, He commands you, and you obey and you follow. He's God fully and completely. He's not a lesser God in any way, shape, or form. He's not a third of God. He's not the second member of the Trinity. He is God fully and completely. That's what it means to say, is come. Okay? We're going to get to this a little bit later, but it's the same thing as saying, I am. That's a statement, that's a title for God, and only God can make it because no matter where you're at, past, present, future, I am. Past, present, future, is come. It's something you can only say about God. All right. Revelation 4.8, when it says, is of God, Revelation 4.8 says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And they're singing that for all eternity. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Only God the Father is eternal. Son of God, Spirit of God, that's what makes Him eternal when you say of in between. Son, capital S, Son of God. Only begotten Son of God. Capital S, Spirit of God. You take the of away, what happens? They're no longer connected or affiliated with God the Father. They're their own separate God. God the Son. God the Spirit. And you can try to capitalize it all you want, but it's lowercase she God, the lowercase s Spirit. It's the Antichrist Spirit. They're always promoting a false 
Jesus, who isn't God fully and completely, and you can have the world. Oh, you can, you know, be your own God. Sometimes I wonder if the pagan, the, the true pagan trinity is basically, you've got the man or the woman, that's a God, and then you have Jesus, which is a God, but that Jesus conforms to them and how they want him to be. And then you have Satan deceiving him. <laughs> There's your three gods. I, I'm sorry for laughing, but it's just ridiculous. It is. To us who are truly saved and born again, not blinded, that's ridiculous. That's Satanism. That's what Satan tried to promise Eve. That's what Satan tried to tempt Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. He tried to tempt him with it, giving him the world. You can be as, you know, you can be as gods, plural, knowing good and evil. You can be as gods. All right. Verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Is come. Remember, conf confession comes from the heart. Is Jesus Lord of your life? No? Then you don't believe He is come. He is come. You don't believe He's the I Am. You don't believe, believe He's the only begotten Son, capital S, Son of God. You don't believe He's the Son of God at all. It's that simple. These people can say it, but they're liars and they're deceivers. And they're trying to destroy the people that are truly saved. They're trying to wreck your walk with the Lord and destroy that walk. And to make you become not fruit, this word of God, to be zero fruitful in you. You're always going to have some fruit here and there, but you're going to go through periods in your life that you're going to look back and go, why wasn't I not fruitful? Because an antichrist spirit in the world came in and distracted you with cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lusts of other things. And here it says, And this is that spirit of antichrist, whereof ye have heard, and that it should come, and even now already is in the world. What's the true antichrist challenge? What Jesus are you, do you, did you get saved off of? What Jesus is Lord of your life? Well, no, really, no, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I'm the Lord of my life. You're not saved. Well, Jesus really, he's not, he's God, but he's not God the Father. Okay, there's only one capital G, God, the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Time and time, our God, even the Father, saying that there's only one God, the Father, says God the Father multiple times. Nowhere does it say God the Son. These people are saying God the Son, they're, per, they're speaking perverse things to, do it, to, to draw away disciples after them. It's God, it's not God the Son, it's the capital S Son of God. There's a connection, and they destroy that connection when they destroy the word of and put God before Son. They destroy the connection. Mm -hmm. The Antichrist spirit is already in the world. Now, once again, I'll say it again. Remember the study, brother, sister Christ, we did on confession. Truth confession comes from the heart. Romans 10.10 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? Uh, Colossians 3.17 reads, And wh whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. There's word and there's deed. And when it comes to true confession, they both need to line up. So what happens when you back someone in a corner where their words and their deeds do not line up? I've dealt with them, brother and sister Christ. I dealt with my ex-wife. I backed her in a corner. She said all the right things. Uh, some of the false, that we call wolves in sheep's clothing, Edward P.F., Robert Breaker, you back them in a corner. And if they're lying about something, their true self comes out. Now, he already came out and promoted a false gospel, but when you back him in the corner with things, like why are you grabbing scripture, out going outside the scriptures, and acting like it's, it's God's word? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? When you back him in the corner, he claims to be a Bible-believing Christian. When you back him in the corner, what happens, these people? Their words that used to line up with this, which what you wanted to hear, start lining up more with their deeds. In other words, their words start going against this. It started out, going, it started out lining up with the Scriptures, but their deeds weren't lining up with Scripture. 
You back them in a corner with their deeds and say, hey, the Bible says, and your deeds aren't lining up with Scripture, their words change. Their true heart comes out. That true confession starts coming out. Okay? And that confession is contrary to Scripture. It's contrary to the God of the King James Bible. It's contrary to Jesus Christ, who is God of the King James Bible. Time and time again. Okay? Is come in the flesh is of God. Turn to John 17, 14. It says here, I have given them the word, and the world hath hated them. The word. Godhead. The name is Jesus. Not Yeshua. Not Yahashua. Not Jehovah. Jehovah is actually a name. Don't get me wrong. It's in Scripture. It's a name. There's a lot of things that will say name of God. Name of God. But the Scriptures say that Jesus has been given a name that's above all names. Period. So the name is Jesus Christ, the capital L Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That's the name that's above all names. And if you try to do away with that name and try to replace it with something else, you have an antichrist spirit. Or you're promoting an antichrist, you might be deceived, might, but you're promoting an antichrist spirit. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray... Not that thou shouldest, thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Verse 16. They are, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What's this thing about is come? When people say, well, their life, are they of the world? I was trying to look for scriptures that talked about you're in the world, but you're not of the world. The changed life, the new man, the new creature in Christ Jesus. Do you believe Jesus is come in the flesh? Then you believe he's God Almighty, fully and completely. He's come into your life. The old man is dead and buried. The new man comes up and says, okay, you are my capital L Lord. A Lord commands, a Lord judges, a Lord chasteneth, punishes. Lord, you are Lord of my life. Command me. How am I supposed to live my life? I give People hate me because I hold them accountable to this book. People hate me. People that I love and care about hate me. Because I hand to this book. I stand, my standard is this book. Jesus is the Lord of my life. He commands, I follow. Do I fail the Lord sometimes? Absolutely. Have I failed the brethren sometimes? Absolutely. And I'm not saying absolutely like it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. But the point is, is I'm not absolutely sinlessly perfect. And that they'll try to attack us with anything, brothers and sisters of Christ. Oh, you're trying to say you're holier than thou. You're just so self-righteous. You're trying to you're just sinless perfection. No. But my heart is perfect before the Lord because my heartfelt desire is I have sorrow in my heart when I sin against God. I have sorrow in my heart when I fail to please God, when I let Him down. My heartfelt desire is I don't want sin in my life. I hate sin. I want to live for Jesus Christ. I want to obey Him. And when you basically back a lot of these fake and frauds in the corner, that's not their heartfelt desire. Their heartfelt desire is for the world. They can say Jesus Christ is come, but they don't believe it. Jesus isn't Lord of their life. Turn to John 15, 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. The whole world as a whole loves the Trinity. Whether you're Christ rejecting, you have these paganism beliefs, they have Trinities everywhere. They love the idea of God's plural. That's the way of the world. That's the way Satan likes it. That's that antichrist spirit. Okay? If you were of the world, the world would love his own. The world doesn't love me. Why? Because I believe in one capital G God, the Father. Jesus Christ, the capital S Son of God, the Father. The Spirit, capital S Spirit of God, the Father. And these three are one. 
Jesus is the body, God the Father is the soul, and the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. There's only one person in the Godhead, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus is God fully and completely because of that. That connection that they all share. Okay, we're going to get into that a little bit later. We're made in the likeness of God. We have body, soul, and spirit. Our soul and our body are connected. I'll talk about it a little bit here. Our body and our soul are connected. So anytime our, when you're lost, that's the state of man. You're spiritually dead. Okay, I drew a diagram once on a, a board. You're spiritually dead, and your body's connected to your soul. So anytime your body sin, it taints your soul. It affects your soul. When you get saved and born again, you're spiritually made alive, so that spirit gets connected to your soul, and that connection from your soul to your body gets severed. The spiritual circumcision snipped. And now your soul gets connected to Jesus Christ. He's the body you're connected to. That's why we're called the body of Christ. Okay? They'd sever, they try to sever the connection that God the Father has with the Son, the body, the soul has with the body, and the body has with the Spirit. That's what they do when they say God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They totally destroy it. Okay? But they would love His own. The world doesn't love me. Okay? I've said this before, and this was way back when, I don't know what it is today, but over half the world believes in A, Jesus Christ. I didn't say THE Jesus Christ, but A Jesus Christ. Who knows what it is now? Okay, Catholicism is trying to grind rampant everywhere. Okay. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. As we get into the scripture, they talk, Paul, John, I'm sorry, John is talking about how people aren't loving the real Jesus Christ. They're not following the real Jesus Christ. Okay. One of the evidences of someone who loves Jesus Christ is they're going to love their brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, But I preach Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of Scripture. It's not a figment of my imagination. I'm not coming up with all my own terms and my own words like the pagan trinity people do. I'm going off the Scriptures. And you've got people out there who are professing to be saved. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'm one of you. They turn on you and they hate you. Just like that, for standing for the King James Bible. What's going on? They're of the world. If you truly believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is come, that he's God fully and completely, you're going to be set apart from this world. And the number one people that I see that vehemently defend the pagan trinity with all their might, it's life or death for them, they're part of this easy believism where... You can get saved and have the world. You can continue in your sin. Who's to really to say what sin is? They want to have the world. They want to look like the world. They still want to be of the world. They're not just in the world. They're of the world. James 4.4 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You can't you can't say, oh, I'm Christian, and then have the world, and be a friend of the world. You know, hanging out and doing the things that the world does, being worldly. You give that stuff up when you get saved, and God works on you. It might be a process. It might take a couple years to give all that stuff up, and God slowly cleans up your life. You might fight God like I did, and God really works hard on you to get that stuff out of your life. But you're not going to want to go the way of the world. People who attack Jesus Christ being the capital S Son of God, and that's them. Anybody who says God the Son, they're attacking the Son of God. When you turn it around, it contradicts each other. It goes against each other. And they'll accuse us, brothers and sisters of Christ, that we don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, we do. Capital S Son of God. The body is connected to God the Father. They are one. We believe in the Son of God. They don't. They say God the Son and sever that connection. There's no connection with God the Father. They're just all one in essence. They just, you know, they can share the title God, but they're really all their own gods, but then they're one God. Totally foreign to Scripture. 
Right. Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If Jesus comes into your life and he is come, the great I Am, he's capital L, Lord of your life, God the Father, manifest in the flesh, okay, he's going to come in and you're not going to conform to this world. You're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove action, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're going to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. A new man, a new woman, you're going to live a life that lines up with the Word of God. And you're going to be showing the perfect will of God. That's why it says, Study, show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You need to be ashamed when you're doing works that aren't based on Scripture. When you start straying from the Word of God and you're going the way of the world, you, have, you should be ashamed. I've had to be ashamed sometimes because I was not going according to the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received not the spirit of the world, this Antichrist spirit, this is Paul again, the spirit of the world, he's talking about the Antichrist spirit, but the spirit which is of God. You know, capital S, Spirit of God. This one says lowercase, but Spirit of God. Still referring to the Holy Spirit, okay? God has given us the Holy Spirit of God to dwell in us. Next one, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Well, how can we know the things that are freely given us of God? Because the Holy Spirit comes in. What He hears, that shall He speak. Talk about the Holy Spirit. What He hears, that shall He speak. Well, what does He hear? God the Father speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. There's that connection. He's not God the Spirit, a separate God than God the Father. They are connected. They are one. It's that simple. Freely given to us of God. 1 John 2.16 For all that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's the biggest thing that this Antichrist spirit offers them, the flesh, the lust of other things, to try to prevent people from getting saved. Remember that study. I understand the Bible's talking about that the cares of this world a deceitfulness of riches and lusts of other things come in and choke the word and become unfruitful. It prevents people from getting saved. Those are three big motivators to prevent people from getting saved. But it's the same motivators that will mess up a Christian today. And I see it happening in people's lives. Brothers and sisters in Christ's lives. They're giving back into feminism. Women and uh, sisters in Christ out there giving back into feminism. And they're not ashamed of it. And you should be ashamed of yourself if you're giving back into feminism. Men out there... They're not obeying God. They're not providing for their own and whatnot. They're making mistakes and they should be ashamed. He that doesn't provide for his own is worse than an infidel. The man doesn't work, neither should he eat. Well, I'm just going to sit around and do nothing. You should be ashamed of yourselves. But the lust of the flesh, you fall back in, you fall into temptation and you choose to sin. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. I can be the Lord of my own life. Maybe I can be the is come. Maybe I can be the I am. Now for us, brothers and Christ, I'm not saying that for me. I'm saying that's their attitude in life. The pride of life is that they think they can be God's. is not of the Father, but is of the world. This whole push of the Trinity, pagan Trinity, is you get to create your own gods, plural, and those gods are okay with sin. Those gods are okay with sin. They're okay with the lust of the flesh. Ah, oh, just put it under the blood. Ah, oh, God will forgive you. Ah, oh, who's really to say that that's really the lust of the flesh? Who's to say that? And they stray away from God's word. The lust of the eyes. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. The Bible versions say just certain kinds of evil. You're supposed to abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Well, can I? I had someone ask, can I hang out with my old friends that are lost? No. Why? 
because you're supposed to abstain from all appearance of evil. All, uh, any friend that I had that was lost, we drifted apart. Why? Because they all were like, hey, come, why, don't, why don't you come over? We're going to be drinking and playing poker. I'm not doing that anymore. Oh, we're going to go watch movies. Sorry, I don't do that anymore. Oh, we're going to play video games. Sorry, I don't do that anymore. Whatever it is, the sin, the lusts of the world that God got cleaned up out of my life, that seemed to be all my lost friends wanted to do. Sorry, I don't do that anymore. You're not going to be hanging out with your lost friends anymore. The lust of the eyes, appearance of evil. That's why I keep te preaching so hardcore, brothers and sisters of Christ. Your home is the only place you're going to be able to make a, a free, sorry, abstain from all appearance of evil free zone. It's your only place. Okay, the world has gotten so wicked, I cannot step foot out of my house. The moment I get in my truck and I start driving down the road, I start seeing things. Immodestly dressed women, women dressed like men. Okay, you might hear someone cuss. Some neighbors are talking, they're cussing. Uh, someone bla uh, blaring satanic style music. You get into town, there's just so much filth and wickedness. Your home is the only place that you can make and abstain from all appearance of evil, free home. And in these last days, you're going to find out, and I'm finding out, not just because there's a lockdown, but I spend most of my time at home anyway. I go for walks in the forest. I live out here in the mountainside, so I'm able to go for a walk and still have peace. Praise the Lord. But your home's pretty much where you're going to spend most of your time. And you only go out to lay out gospel tracts and preach the plan of salvation, shop for what you need, and you come right back home where you have your peace. God gives you peace. Because you have to abstain from all appearance of evil. You're not vexed in and day out by the filthy conversation of the wicked like Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And the pride of life. And I see pride creeping in among the brethren. Well, I struggle with pride. You're not supposed to be struggling with pride. You're supposed to be struggling with a haughty spirit. Someone tried to get in this with me, and I won't go into it too much detail, but a haughty spirit, you look at the definition, you look at the definition of, of pride... It's like saying it's a gas tank. Honey spirit is half full. Pride is full. Honey spirit is saying, hey, it's starting to get to pride, but it's not there yet. That's why it says honey spirit before a fall. You're not quite at pride yet, because once you get to pride, what's going to happen? You're going to get destroyed. So what are you supposed to be struggling with? The haughty spirit that's leading to pride. Once you hit full on pride, it'll destroy you. And I've seen it hurt men in ministry. Okay? Just wanted to throw that in there. But you see the pride of life. I, you can be as God's knowing good and evil. And it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. The Antichrist spirit is always of the world. The world loves the Trinity. All these false religions that people will say, they're truly false, I know they're false. They preach the Trinity. God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. If it's of the world, it's definitely not of the Father. It's not of God. We turn around and say we're preaching the Godhead. God in one person, because that's what the Bible teaches. God the Father is the soul. Jesus is the body. The Spirit of God is the Holy Ghost. Or Holy Spirit. They're both the one and the same. It's been called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And the world hates us for sticking to the King James Bible. But if you stick to the Trinity, the world loves you. And that's not a red flag. What's going on? These people that are falling away, they have an Antichrist spirit, or they're being manipulated by an Antichrist spirit. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit that's in them if, if, if they're truly saved. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the changed life gospel, death, the old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ, burial, he's buried with Jesus Christ, resurrection, the new man is raised with Christ, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, death, burial, resurrection, Oh, there's no changed life. You don't believe in a resurrection. You deny it in your heart with the life that you live. Okay? I'm not teaching works to be saved. After salvation, true conversion, that Jesus Christ came into your life and saved you, is that He's capital L, Lord of your life. 
He commands, you obey. The old man could care less about God and following God's rules and His commands. The new creature in Christ Jesus wants to do everything he can, he or she can, to please God. And that includes following His commands. And we talked to one of those. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Be not conformed to this world. These are all commands. Okay. Thus the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of of God. Okay? I've always should shine unto them. Let's finish it out. I've always told the brethren, be careful. We're not made in the image, like men and women are not made in the image of God. An image is something physical. Here's the thing. I honestly believe I it says what we are are made in the image of God, but I'm talking about when it talks about the creation, it's talking about Adam when it's talking about the image. It's talking about Adam and Eve when it says likeness. An image is always something you can see. Then you get over here to 2 Corinthians 4, 4. It says, The glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. God manifests in the flesh. It's God's body. That's what Jesus is. You can see the flesh. You can see my flesh. But you can't see my soul or my spirit. Now, before the fall, and then after the fall, there was a change in that body, in that image with Adam. Okay? We're made, men today are made in the image, if you want to say image, of the fallen state of Adam. Not Adam before the fall. Okay, But image is always something, just side note, is, is something you can see. That's why I always push that we are all made in the likeness of God. And I got attacked for that. I said, no, image is something you can see. I've already talked about that. I showed in the scripture. It says image, then likeness. Then it says man, and then man and woman. As far as created he man, man and woman created he them. It separates the two. So what's the distinction? Image, likeness. Man was made in the image. Adam was made in the image of God. He's a man. God is a man, not a woman, not a unisex. He is a man. And we find out when he reveals it, the man Christ Jesus Okay, Jesus is that man. Okay, that's the image. Okay? But it says who's the image of God. Jesus is the body of God. So the soul is inside him. There's a connection. So Jesus is God the Father. They are one. But you have people who deny that. They're denying the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God. It should shine into him. Satan comes along with his pagan trinity, his pagan philosophies, his pagan beliefs, Offering you the world, the sins of the flesh, the lust, what did we read up there? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He offers that to, this, to people and it appeals to the flesh, it appeals to people, and they go for it. They don't want the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. And brothers and sisters in Christ, our job is to keep our eyes on the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, living for Him and walking with Him, and doing our best to point the lost world to the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. And as these days get further and further, I tried handing out gospel tracts. I've maybe it's because I went a while without doing it because, you know, they tried to do the lockdowns for all the junk that's been going on, and. I start trying again, and I'm just noticing a lot of people are denying it. No, I don't want the gospel track. No, I don't want it. I'm getting a lot of no's, no's, no's. I had one guy that said yes finally, and I praise the Lord that a guy said yes and took the gospel track. That's how bad it's getting out here, trying to hand out gospel tracks. Nobody wants them. I've had men and women tell me, I'm, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. And I've gotten to the point, there's so many false converts out there, I said, hey, can you please read that track anyway? And if that track truly applies to you, then pass it on to somebody else. Because in the end, most of those people I come across in town, all of them, that profess to be a Christian, you sit down and talk with them. They don't believe in the authority of Scripture. Jesus isn't the capital L Lord of their life. They don't believe in the true plan of salvation that leads you to the real Jesus Christ that becomes the Lord of your life. They're not truly saved. Why? Because the God of this world has blinded the minds that believe not. They get fooled into worshiping Satan, a lowercase g God, the Son, as Jesus Christ, an antichrist. He's a fake. Mark 8.36 reads, 
For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? This deception out there, brother, sister, Christ, that you can have the world and be a Christian. What should it profit a whole man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You mean there is no in-between? If you gain the whole world, you do what? You lose your own soul. There is no, well, I can be a Christian and now I can have the world, the whole world. No, you cannot. And that's the big deception out there. And I, I believe it starts with the Trinity. Not just the Trinity, but this Antichrist spirit that's in the world that's trying to hide and disguise himself as a fake Jesus. And you're getting all these false converts pretending to be Jesus, uh, Christians. I'm one of you. I'm one of you. That's the fight that's going on. That's why you put on the whole armor of God. We're fighting this Antichrist spirit that's in the world. We're pointing people, we're pointing out false converts, we're pointing out that Antichrist spirit, and we're pointing people to the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, the King James Bible. And the world hates us as a whole. But every once in a while you come across somebody that you lead them to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You lead them to the real Jesus of Scripture. You might even come to somebody who's saved and they've fallen away and you lead them back to the real Jesus Christ that saved them. You know, thank you, brother, I was wrong. I should have done that. I fell into the world and the ways of the world. I was just miserable and just wicked. I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me. Deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and get back to following Jesus Christ. It's come in the flesh. Okay, here's the, here's the verse, though, I was going to say. It's come in the flesh. It's only God can say it is come, and the flesh is talking about the body, Jesus. That's why it says, in the flesh. It is come in the flesh. In the flesh, it's saying, hey, this is God. It's come as a title for God, the Father, in the flesh. I am. That's a statement that you say. We already read about holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All right. Exodus 3.13 And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14 And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. He said, And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent, hath sent me unto you. I am. It's a title for God the Father. He's eternal. He's God, singular, but capital G God. One God, eternal. One thing I like to point out as a side note is, every time I mention it, I love mentioning it. The bush that was burning, what's the three um, physical manifestations of the glory of the Lord? Fire, smoke, clouds, smoke, and light. So you have... The tree is burning, but not being burnt up. But it's the glory of the Lord. God the Father is speaking to Moses through the glory of the Lord. The soul is speaking to Moses. Okay. John 8, 58 reads, Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. You go back to John 8, 19, you go back, uh, ways it says then said they unto him where is thy father jesus answered ye ne neither know me nor my father if he had known me he should have known my father also they're asking where is his father he's claiming god is his father where is his father if he had known me you would have known my father also he's saying i am what's the reaction to it verse 59 then took they up stones to cast at him but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and passed by. Now I might still do a separate teaching, but I just want to show what's the proper response to somebody who rejects Jesus Christ being God the Father. That Jesus Christ is the body, that God the Father is the soul, and they're connected, which makes them one. The soul is connected to the body. The body does something, the soul is doing it. They're connected. Remember our lost state, when, we, when our body would sin, it would taint our soul. It was like our soul was doing it, because they were connected. 
They are one until God comes through at salvation and snips spiritual circumcision. Your body is no longer connected to your soul. When your body sins, it's no longer going to tank the soul and destroy the soul. Okay? We're made in the likeness of, of God. Body, soul, and spirit. What's, if, what's our reaction supposed to be to somebody who doesn't want the truth? Look at what Jesus did. Did Jesus strike them all dead? Did Jesus get in a big debate with them? He tried talking with them. He tried explaining. He tried preaching truth. But when it got to the point where they weren't going to listen, you could see them pick up stones. The hatred. The anger. Okay. What does he do? Fine. And he goes his separate way. But then Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Let them alone. But to deny Jesus is God the Father, God fully and completely, is to deny that Jesus is come in the flesh. That he is I am. It's just that simple. Right. And that's the big push, brothers and Christ. This Antichrist spirit that's out there, the true test is, is Jesus Lord of their life? Is Jesus God fully and completely? I bring this up only because I said Jesus Lord of your life. If Jesus is Lord of your life, you have a changed life. You were resurrected with Jesus Christ as a new man, new creature in Christ Jesus. Is that there? No. Right. We're going to stop here. We're going to keep going, but I'm going to stop here for part one, and we will continue. I'm going to take a break, and then we're going to continue in part two. Okay, We're just going to keep going, and we're going to really drive this home. If you read the whole chapter, we're going to get to it. There's a part in the chapter where it talks about, you know, you got to confess that Jesus is the Son, capital S, Son of God. And then it talks about the only begotten Son that He's born of, He's derived from, if you say Jesus is not the Father, you're saying Jesus is not the Son of God. It's that simple. And we're going to get into that as we continue. But I'm going to end part one here, and we will start part two here in a little bit.